from the heart of Toronto's financial district and within the award-winning BCE Place. An arena of glass has been assembled for an extraordinary sporting event where the best squash players in the world are all set to do battle and where the winner will claim one of the world's most prestigious titles, that of the Pace Canadian Squash Classic. From the beautiful Galleria here at BCE Place, we say hello Canada and welcome to this final of the Pace Canadian Squash Classic, joined by former world number four, Martin Heath of uh, Scotland. And uh, so it's Jonathan Power looking for a fourth win in five years. And these two are different in many ways, different in terms of personality. Of course, we have the more explosive, outgoing Power and maybe the quiet Frenchman in Lin Ku. But their games are different too, aren't they? Absolutely. Terry Lanku loves playing a medium pace, very strong athlete. He tries to make the other player run around, right, tries to tire him out. Jonathan Powler is a hustler. Yeah. He loves the fight. And uh, I think that's one of the reasons that he's going to do well today because he's is, in his, one of his favorite tournaments in his hometown. He's got a really good chance. Yeah, there really is a home court advantage here at BCE Place. If there's a concern for, for Jonathan Power, though, it has to be the fact that he played a semifinal that went 91 minutes. Will tiredness be a factor? Well, he has done everything he can to get ready. You talked about vitamins and massages. Did you do all that? What kind of preparation was there prior to the... Prior oh, yeah, I had uh, treatment last night, treatment today, like uh, all kinds of stuff from uh, massages to acupuncture to... Uh you name it, chiropractic work. <laughs> now you hope it works. I hope it works. Now it's just squash from here on out. Thank you very much. This is uh, the 11th time you've played uh, Jonathan. You've beaten him twice, and they were both in 2003. Does it mean something going in, knowing that you have beaten him? Well, uh, of course, before that, I was struggling to get a game from him, you know. It was uh, really all over me, and uh, because I had too much respect on him, you know, he's... He was he used to be my model, so uh, well I still got some respect for him. But I st well, I know now that I can I can win, I can beat him. You know, Th this is different. So uh, it's going to be a tough one, but uh, we've got 50% chance to win. Bonne chance. Yeah. Merci. This is the 11th meeting, lifetime between these two, Power and Linku. Power has won eight of ten. Power, the 30-year-old native of Toronto, now makes his home in Montreal, seated 7th in this tournament, but ninth in the world. He advanced with a first-round win over James Wilstrop, the former world junior champion, beat Peter Nickel, the former world number one, in three games in the quarter, and then went 91 minutes, a five-game marathon, to beat Anthony Ricketts of Australia in the semi. The 28-year-old Lin Ku hails from Paris, first ever Frenchman to claim the number one ranking, currently ranked number two in the world, second here. He beat Dan Jensen in the first round, beat Joseph Kneipp of Australia in the quarters, and then was a four-game winner over Canada's Graham Riding in the semifinal. Well, that's a great start from Jonathan Power. Show against that beautiful backhand volley. I think that'll play a big part in this match. Now let's remember the way Power started out, of course, against Ricketts. He got up very quickly, in fact, took the first two games only to have sort of a, a mid-match sputter. That's right, he totally dominated the play, and Andy De Ricketts obviously was going to play a long game, trying to take the legs out of Jonathan Power. And Power just lost concentration, as you said, but he managed to regain it, and that's why he's in this final now. Now, by comparison, Linku against Graham Riding lost the opening game until he figured out Riding, and then he dominated the final three games. Well, he doesn't play a dominate, dominating style of play, really. He's, uh, he's a guy that likes to play medium pace. He likes pushing the ball up and down the wall. You can see here he likes to get great length in the ball put the ball to the back of the court. Takes him a bit of time to get into the match. Wow, early mistakes from the world number two, Thierry Linku. Wow. It is now four love power here in the first. If you're power, this kind of start, considering the semifinal he had 91 minutes, you want this over as quickly as possible. 
Absolutely, yeah. He, he definitely didn't want to go to five yesterday. 91 minutes is a long time. This 11 scoring produces more intense matches as well. So that was, it was really was a 91 minute sprint. Oh! And now, one four. So the little drop shot just falls short, catches the 10. It is now 1 4, and it is Lin Ku serving for the first time. Well, in your intro, Vic, you mentioned that Jonathan Power is standing at number nine in the world at the moment. It's got to be said that that's a bit of a false ranking. Jonathan, obviously, when he's playing well, he's playing as well as he ever had. He just won the Hungarian Open, but uh, he has uh, had a lot of injuries this last year. He has, and it forced him to miss the British Open, a f you know, a former champion, their unforced error, and that's the second point for Linku. So he's picking his spots as he comes back. Absolutely, but the fact is he's getting older as well. He's 30 years old. He spent about 15 years on tour. So that eventually takes its toll in your body. Ho, ho, ho. Jonathan Power catches the nick of the side wall at the back of the court. Well, as expected, these guys coming out attacking right from the first point. Power leads 5-2 here in this opening game of the final of the Pace Canadian Squash Classic. We mentioned that this is the 11th meeting lifetime. Power has won eight of the 10 meetings, including the last, which was in February of 2004 at the Tournament of Champions in the U.S. <laughs> well, that rally had everything. Great use of the angles. Tilly Lanku just clipping the top of the 10. Well, as Terry Lank, who has a few words with the referee, we, we see Mike Way in Jonathan's corner. That's uh, his coach, has been for a good 10 years. Very, really the man responsible for Jonathan Popper's meteoric rise about 10 years ago. Well, we're back into play. 6-2 to Power. And this really is a great start for him. The last thing that he wants to do is get sucked into another five-game marathon. No, he exactly. wants to finish this match off as quickly as possible. And he's up 7-2 here in game one. Well, there we see Lanku. Good work up and down the backhand wall. Wow. Had his shoulders open as if he was going to go left, and he went right. Yeah. Well, that's one of Power's great attributes. This is deception. And again. Little drop. Yes, lad. And lead is called. Lead. Seven, two, Mr. Power from the right. There's only two years difference between the, the two. Power is 30. Linku is 28, although Linku paid him the biggest compliment. He really was his mentor. He watched him. He wanted to be like Power, and until he beat Power twice in 2003, it had it always been Power. And he says, I respect him now, and maybe with a score 7-2, maybe he's respecting him still too much. <laughs> Well, that's certainly possible, but the fact is he, he has scored two victories over him. I was actually there in New York when he beat him first time in February 2003 in Tournament of Champions. And that would really oh. was a fantastic match for the Frenchman. He stuck to his yeah. tactics. He kept the ball straight up and down the wall. He really made power go into all four corners. He doesn't want to let power control the middle. He uses racket skills. The stroke awarded to Lin Ku is power back in. Wow, dug off the wall by power, and then he, it died. 
Four seven. I couldn't get my racket up. I know what you're saying. No left. So point to Linku. It's now four seven as he gets now within three. And this is almost a carbon copy of the semi-final that Power played with Anthony Ricketts of Australia. Took the early lead, a big lead, and then gave up a, a few points. Unforced errors, maybe losing a little focus. Absolutely, Five, just seven. stuck that backhand volley in the tin. Nice tight shot from the Frenchman. I always think it's quite important when the guys come out for a match to watch their body language. And it seems as though even though Power is hustling quite well, he doesn't look too comfortable in the ball. He's trying to pick off clean winners. Doesn't really want to work for his points. And, and that's the sort of attitude that if Thierry Lanku can stay with him, then if he pushes it into a long game, then Power's going to be in trouble. All right, now Power, we've seen already complain early. Is that a sign also that he's not too comfortable? Probably. That's, that's his style anyway. He loves having an ongoing conversation with the referee. But if he's dominating and on his game, there's no reason to complain. Would seem Absolutely. To be. You're right. Oh, picked up and now. <laughs> Five, seven, Power eight. couldn't get through him. Well, there we see Terry Lanku dominating the middle of the court, that T position. Both these guys love to control that center part of the court. Boy. Look at the points given away by, by power. Four straight unforced errors, strokes. Oh, what a shot from Thierry. And now we are even at seven apiece. We're tied 7-7 seven, seven in this opening game of the final of the Pace Canadian Squash Classic. And it's Terry Linku serving. A 7-2 power lead has disappeared. Well, that's a good decision from the referee. Jonathan Power so deceptive for that backhand drop. Boy, there was Linko looking for the let, but the ball was called down. And so Power has the lead again and the serve back. Oh, terrific get. Oh, great fake. Guess what? Guess what? Eight, seven. He's got to play, man. Pardon? Well, as Terry Lanku argues with the referee, yes, he, he we'll take a look at that last point there. He's, Jonathan Poe really should have played that ball. But really, the thing that I'm looking at here is Jonathan Poe. He really is having to hustle for his points. Doesn't look very comfortable in the ball. Doesn't look very comfortable, comfortable to be out there. Remember from the semi-final that Lanku played against Riding of Toronto. He started off at the tee, then he forced the game by moving up. Well, that was a fantastic shot from Power. He just can't afford to give him loose shots in the front of the court. He just snapped his wrist at the last moment, sent the ball cross court. And he now leads it 9-7. Yes, sir. <laughs> Well, this is a very, a very natural thing in squash. There's, these guys are competing for space. You're meant to give your opponent free access to the ball. You're meant to give them a path to the ball. But if your opponent plays a loose shot, then... The man in the uh, chair, the referee, is Graham Waters. International Squash Association. It is 9-7, Jonathan Power leading Thierry Linku here in game one of this final of the Pace Canadian Squash Classic. And now as we play, remember, it's an 11-point win. If we get to 10-all, we play the tie break. But it is now serving for game one, Jonathan Power. Oh, that was a lazy mistake from Lanku. He really fought his way back into this first game, punching the top of the tin. Ten seven right, game ball. But good good hustling from power. 
to get these last couple of points. Well, considering the way the game and turned around for him, when you're up 7-2, then find yourself tied, great focus, don't you think, for him to regroup? Absolutely. There's definitely a reverse pressure thing happening when, oh. you, when your opponent recoups your lead. Lin Koo keeps himself alive. Well, I definitely think that Jonathan Power needs to take this first game to stand a chance in this final. Terry Lanky moving very easily. Cross court, good get. Little drop, tight against the wall. Linku. Oh, this is good play from both players. Tight, oh, tight oh. wall. And the Frenchman shakes his fist. Fantastic. Well, we see he just chops that ball into the front backhand corner, nine, clings ten. to the wall. So it's 9 10 here in game one, and Lenku will try to force the tiebreaker by getting it to 10 all. Quick changes of direction across the court from both players. Seems like Jonathan Power is going to have to pick oh. off an outright winner to win this game. Yes, left. Yes, my, left. my. Nine, ten left. My, my. Well, excuse me. <laughs> both players complaining that the other one is not uh, giving enough space to play the ball. I think Jonathan Power using this situation just to have a little bit of a rest. Certainly, he doesn't seem to be very comfortable in the ball. He's not getting as low as he did yesterday in the first couple of games against Ricketts. He really needs this first game. Again, if we get to 10-10, we'll play the tie break. Oh, oh goodness. We won't go to a tie break when you make shots like that. So a lot of the guys seem to be retiring early with injuries since this 11 scoring has come in. Do you think this is what is affecting their, their choices now? <laughs> yeah, it, it was supposed to, to prevent in injuries, you know, and and to last longer for the players but looks like it's becoming more intense and um, brutal <laughs> so uh, well the tough guys are, are gonna last longer but uh, you have to you have to know your body and you need to rest as well and not play too many tournaments yeah Jonathan Power from Toronto, now living in Montreal, wearing the red shirt with the white shorts. Was an 11-9 first game winner. In a game in a, which was really even when you look at the statistics from their errors and their winners, almost dead even. That's right, Jonathan Power playing six winners in the first game to Thierry Lanku's five. Only oh. four errors to Thierry Lanku's five. Now there's an error now as he puts it into the top of the tin as he tried the drop shot. So it's a one-love lead for Thierry Lanku. Well, the end of that last game, Jonathan Power had a, a great lead. Thierry Lanku clawing it back. Jonathan Power looked in a lot of trouble, but he picked off an amazing cross court winner into the nick to finish off that first game. And I think you may have to do the same again oh. here. Oh, quickly take it. Oh, oh, and just, just over the tin. What a beautiful shot. Jonathan Power 
using his delay on that backhand to get his French, the French opponent off balance. Finishing off for that absolutely beautiful drop shot. It's 1-1 here in game two of this final of the Pace Canadian Squash Classic. Jonathan Power winning game one, 11-9. Beautiful. Who's going to bust their way out? And it's Power that plays it back and then out. Well, it's got to be said that when Power is lunging forward into these front corners, he doesn't seem to have the balance or the poise that he's had the rest of this tournament. I think he's tired. He is going to have to use his racket skills to finish off this match. He went 91 minutes, five sets, two of them going to tie breaks to get by... Australia's Anthony Ricketts in the semi-final. Oh, off the back wall to save it and just failing to. Well, again, we see power. His movement really very ragged. He clutches his foot in pain, but... Well, let's talk just a little bit about what he has has had to overcome in the in the last year. Seven different injuries in 12 months, from broken fingers when he caught his fingers in somebody's shirt, he's had calf problems, he's had back spasms, his hips have been bothering him. You're right, here's a 30-year-old, but after 15 years on the Pro Tour, is, is showing signs of the wear and tear. Well, he's a guy that he's, he plays very intense squash. The way he moves around the court, he's always going to get injured, whether he's 20 years old or 30 years old. But, oh, oh, well, he got away with that one. Terry Lanku stepping about six feet in front of the tee, intercepting that ball, but just pushing it into the top of the tin. Power gets the serve back. 2-3. Well, Power is really staying in the corners. Not moving out at all. He's going to have to keep these balls tight. And that is just incredible. Yeah, you have to. Let's take a look at that because the way Power did that, he put his finger up as to what? Colette? Well, he questioned Terry Lanku's pickup previously. Okay. But, but really, he continued with the play, which is a smart thing. Absolutely. You don't want to stop. Just in case the referee doesn't call it. But he finished off that rally with a great backhand right. flick. Three all left. So deceptive. Well, that was three great volleys from Thierry. Four, three. Eventually finishing off with a beautiful forehand nick. Wow. Staying tight, he does. Another drop. Now blasting his way out is Linku. Amazing retrieving from Thierry Lanku. Five, three. Oh, Jonathan Power saying that that was a scoop, but looked good to me. This is the first lead for Lin Ku in the match. Well, we really see here Terry Lanku playing beautiful squash. Six, three. He's playing very smart. He's still attacking his opponent. He realizes that Jonathan is not in full physical form. Make him search into these corners. And now 7-3. Seven, seven, three. Three. Oh, one thing that Thierry Lanku is doing here by keeping the ball tight into the corners. In the <laughs> well, I was going to say that he's keeping the ball tight to the corners, but he put the ball into the middle. Jonathan Power slashing it cross court into the neck. But for, for one of the few times we saw Lenku behind the tee, not in front of it, taking the game away. Five, seven. Absolutely, he has been dominating this second game, but Jonathan Power using those great racket skills, pulling back a couple of points.
well. What an amazing rally. These guys are standing so far forward. Wow. Wow, oh. wow, wow, wow. He got there. Well, this is Jonathan Power, the hustler at his best. It's obvious to the crowd and I'm sure to Terry Lankew that he's not moving that well. But he can hustle as well as anybody. Yeah, but there, the unforced error. It is 8-6 here in game two of this final of the Pace Canadian Squash Classic after Jonathan Power won the opener, 11-9. Terry Lin Koo, number two in the world from Paris, France, leading. Well, it's not by accident that Terry Lin Koo is number two in the world. Incredibly tough competitor. Very difficult to beat. Great front court play from both oh, these guys. Wonderful, wonderful. Oh. Pull it down into the front wall to have it die in front of a diving Terry Linko. Well, Terry Linko looked to be in total control of that rally. But Jonathan Power finishing off beautiful volley into the neck. The crowd, 500 strong here at the Galleria at BCE Place. Of course, it's home court advantage for Jonathan Power. I apologize. And now 7 8. 7 8 Power serving in game two of the final of the Pace Canadian Squash Classic. And this is turning out to be. A classic, these two. Oh, he drove it by, and Power's still able to get there. Quick return off the back wall. Well, Jonathan Power doesn't, be do doesn't want to be doing this. He doesn't want to be running corner to corner. Well, that ball looked down. Jonathan Power throwing his hand in the air. If he loses this rally, he's going to have a, certainly a few words to the referee. Oh, against the wall now. Oh, this is such a crucial rally for both players. Well, you just know that that was coming from Power, didn't you? When he got into the corner, you knew he was going to drop him. Two of the most physical... Well, you think about how fit these two are. No wonder that Forbes magazine and many people say that squash is physically the best sport in the world. That's right. Forbes magazine voted it the number one sport for fitness. And it's something that as squash players we're all very proud of. What a rally. And certainly Jonathan Power looking quizzically at his opponent. I thought that ball was good. Boy, ball was down. Point given to Linku. So he serves, leading 9 8, trying to even it at a game apiece. And we talk about the physical aspect of the game, and of course, squash now being considered as a full Olympic sport, possibly a demonstration sport by 2012. Where will those games be? Well, some people suggest Paris is the front runner for that. But we'll see, wouldn't that be something for the growth of the game? Absolutely, it's something that we've been trying hard for for a number of years. It's already a medal sport in the Commonwealth Games and 
We know that Jonathan Power is a gold medal winner in 2002 and Manchester quick return. Good get by Lin Koo. Well, the tension's really increasing in this second game. A crucial time for both players. Terry Lanka does not want to go two games down to Jonathan Power. But it's got to be said, Jonathan Power oh. still looking ragged. I was a little surprised he didn't play the drop shot there when he was up in that corner because that seems to be his favorite shot. Plays it there, hooks it down. Good get. Oh, oh and he played it. Wow, wow, wow. Oh, what a volley from Jonathan Power into the front backhand corner. Terry Lanky stretching forward, just pushes it into the top of the tin. Score stands at nine points all. Yeah, we're 9-9. Nine, nine. Nine all. Nine all here in game two. Power winning the first, 11-9. And he's been forced to come back. Well, Vic, we were saying in the last game, at the end of the first game, that Jonathan Power really needed to finish off, finish it off with a, a winner, which he did. Still looking a little bit ragged in his movement. I think he needs to do exactly the same here. It'll drop. No oh, no well, that's a big decision. That is a big decision. Terry Lanku was there. Definitely bumped Jonathan Power on the way well, through the to the ball. the foot was left in there, wasn't it? He left his foot behind. And so now, Jonathan Power will serve for game two. And you ran through the interference when you got to the wall, then you asked. I know that. Terry Linko still not sure and has a word with the referee, Graham Waters. Okay, let's play on, please. Yeah, I actually agree with Terry Lanky in that situation. He was bumped on the way through. Jonathan Power is a little bit slow to clear the ball there. Very simple lead, I thought. But it's got to be said, these referees are a long way back from the court. They tend to lose depth perception a little bit. Serving four, game two. And a two-love lead. That's a let call. You know, you talked about how power seems to go in and out. It's almost as if he has power failure. I wonder if he's, <laughs> he's sly like a fox at times. You know, he just pulls back, waits for his moment to expand, expand the energy. Absolutely. He's one of the most creative competitors on the tour. He uses everything to his advantage. And we see Jonathan Power stepping up now, following the ball. Interesting, the game here that Lenku is playing. He wants to force him into the backcourt. Doesn't want to even leave anything short for Power. Well, he, he certainly doesn't want to leave many loose shots uh -oh. short, but that's a beautiful uh -oh, tight uh -oh. shot. Oh, oh. oh my. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> Well, I don't quite know when Terry Lanky was asking for that stroke. Jonathan Power was very quick to clear that, but referee deeming that he didn't give him enough room to play the ball, so stroke to Lanky. So here we are. We're at the situation. We're tied 10-10. We'll play the tie break. You have to win by two. Well, what a tussle. The second game has been point for point. Terry Lanky composing himself. Oh, that's great use of the wrist from both guys, changing the direction of the ball across the court. Good changing of the angles again. And Jonathan Power, oh, what a shot. Oh, what an interception. Pulled down and now looking for the let and gets it. <laughs> Jonathan Power hitting his head in frustration. Well, this really is a huge point for Terry Lanku. Does not want to lose this second game and go too love down. 
We're in the tiebreak of game two. Here in this final, the Pace Canadian Squash Classic. Jonathan Power in the red and white shorts won the opening game 11-9 and has battled his way back now to force this tie break. We're tied at 10. You have to win by two. Oh, well, these are home court decisions, I think. Oh, oh, Let's take a look oh. at that again. Jonathan Power, his favorite shot, gets low in the ball, cuts in the drop shot, but wasn't tied to the wall. Taylor Lankin could have got that ball, I think. Well, that's a big point. You wouldn't have got to it. Sorry. Play on, please. Play on. Now, you should explain for somebody who may be watching this for the first time, because you're saying it's a home court decision. This, this gentleman, Mr. Waters, isn't from Toronto. He's just from the International Federation, am I correct? Well, when you get 500 Canadians breathing down your oh, neck. And oh, <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> well, it's a very natural thing. You see it all around the world. I've played in courts and... In Egypt, where, uh, where the decisions well, now, certainly see, don't go now, my way. See, there's Jonathan Power saying, come on, where is the home court decision? What is that? You just gave him <laughs> one back. We're tied at 11. Uh, must win by two. See, I'm one of those people who believes it all evens out at the end. You get some calls, whatever the sport is, you get some calls in your favor, and you won't get others. Absolutely. Well, I'm sure we've all seen enough enough sport to know that that is the case. They do even out in the end. But it's got to be said, even though Jonathan Power is one love up here, physically, he really is very tired. Terry Lanku oh. moving so well. And this is not the type of game, again, that we say Power wanted to get involved with after going 91 minutes. Is that just blasts by Power? And now it is... Thierry Lenku serving for game two, up 12-11. Well, there we see Jonathan Power's effervescent temperament showing his frustration. And this is good concentration from the Frenchman. Keeping the ball tight to the wall. Oh. Goes deep, power, cross court. Link. Oh, here's a loose one. Little drop. Yeah. Well, the oh. decision is returned. What a beautiful backhand draw from Terry Lanku. Oh, Touched yeah, and now Jonathan Power is saying what kind of home court decision was that as Lanku wins it 13-11 to even it one game apiece. Play Better Squash, brought to you by Primus with former World Junior Champion James Wilstrom. Destabilizing your opponent in squash is a good thing, but can be very difficult. The way I do this is to send my opponent in unpredictable directions. Let me take you through two of my favorite deceptive strokes. The first one is the hold, drop or strike. Usually played from the front of the court, the racket is held till the very last moment and you mimic the drop shot and flick through the racket to play the deep straight drive. The second one is the flick from side to side. You first mimic to play the shot to one side and flick at the last minute to take the ball to the other side of the court. That's it for today. I'm James Wilstrop and the ball is in your court. So squash it. Play better squash. Brought to you by Primus. We're all even at a game apiece here in this final of the Pace Canadian Squash Classic. And statistically in that second game, the unforced errors, two more by Jonathan Power. Both of them, though, hit the same amount of winners at eight apiece. Well, that's right. That's a great number of winners from both players. Eight apiece, that is phenomenal. Only three errors from Lanku, though, five from Power. And so was the difference. Some questionable calls, according to <laughs> Mr. Heath. But we're even at a game apiece. Well, I think that second game was huge for Jonathan Power. 
He really needed to win that. He needed to win this in three games, I think. Terry Lanku, such a formidable physical presence, certainly didn't have as hard a match in the semi-finals as Jonathan Power did. And he has the early lead, a quick lead of one love. Oh, and couldn't get there. Well, Jonathan Power clutching his ankle again. Well, there's a great angle from Thierry across the court. Two love. Lin Ku leading here in game three. Yes, let. Yes, let. And did he take a... Did, did he take a... It looks like he took a... Shoulder to the chin. Two love. Quick three love lead now for Lin Ku of France. Nice. Oh. oh, you know what? He faked him because I thought he would drop again and then he put it deep. Well, that really is Jonathan Power's skill. He can, from the same technique, he can drop it short or he can punch it to the back of the court. Such a strong wrist and great timing. And isn't that bad timing? You make a nice shot like that to pick up your first point, then the unforced error, and it's now 4 1. Linku. Well, the third game, when the games are won apiece, is the most crucial game of the match. Jonathan Power giving Lanka a 4-1 lead. Oh! Well, that's indicative of the fact that Jonathan Power, he does not want to run to the back of the court. He's trying to volley everything, which is it's a good tactic, but Tito Lanku knows if he gets, gets it tight to the wall, he's going to win the point. That's, that's eyes in the back of your head. Yeah. That's realizing where your opponent is and then just dropping it so he can't get it. Well, I think with that shot, it didn't really matter where his opponent was. It was such a well-played shot. Dropped into the neck. But you're right. He seems to have an intuitive sense of where his opponent is. Oh, nice wow. get. Another drop. Oh, Blasting his way out. Oh, phenomenal retrieving from both players. Well, Terry Lanka really performing a clean-up campaign in this third game, taking a 6-2 lead. Well, Jonathan Power really, his movement really struggling yeah, here. He is, and you can see him now. The well, 91 he... minutes that he played that semifinal, obviously having its effect. It is 7-2 here in Game 3. We're tied at one game apiece in the final of the Pace Canadian Squash Classic. And the Frenchman, Thierry Linku, leading. Oh. So there he goes, eh? The Fox. Again, the punch to the back of the court from the short swing. 3-7. Well, he's going to try and claw his way back here. But it's got to be said, Jonathan Power's movement is looking pretty ragged. He's, he's not turning well. He still seems to be running okay, but he can't stop on the ball. Well, I was going to say that it's very smart play from Terry Lanku, bringing Jonathan Power long and then short into the front of the court. Well, if, you want, if, you, if, you, if he's feeling it, you want to make him work. Is that simple as that? Absolutely. He really wants to get the ball away from Jonathan Power's racket. He doesn't want to give Jonathan anything around the middle of the court. If he's going to win the point, he's going to work for it. He's got to run for it. And it's just another nail in his coffin, really. Oh! And now. now that may not be physical. That's probably frustration. Well, I think it, Jonathan Power, you see, he's getting cramped in the ball. He's not giving himself enough space. He really doesn't feel physically capable of doing that at the moment. In contrast, Terry Lanku, this could be a first round match. He looks so comfortable. For him, it's a battle of concentration. Out. And out. And now it's a 9-4 lead for Terry Lanku. 
Number two in the world, second seed here at the Pace Canadian Squash Classic. Ah, but you see now, that's the kind of thing, if you're Link, don't give him the chance. You're just giving him an opportunity to get right back in. Absolutely right. You've got to be ruthless. And he is a great competitor to Terry Lanku. He really is a ruthless competitor, but just dropped that ball into the tin there. And you think about sports, Martin, that... Oh, that's that. phenomenal interception. But, well, see, there's what... It goes back to what you said about him taking balls early. Yeah, he was standing so far in front of the tee. This guy reads the game so well. He sees the ball so early. Very relaxed. Just drop that in the front of the court. But we see there at the back of the court, really struggling to turn. Terry Lanku, oh, very oh. smart play. Getting Jonathan to turn forehand, then backhand. Oh! oh! It was there for the taking, and he put it into the tin. Yeah. Well, Jonathan Power on the run. And Trying to play a floated forehand drop. Just clipped the top of the tin. And now serving four, game three, and a 2-1 lead. Terry Linku. And he will take it, 11-6, as Linku takes a 2-1 lead. And we'll see how much power is left in Jonathan. Jonathan, there's been a lot of talk recently about your impending retirement. How long do you really think you have left in this game? Well, it's tough to say. I think the, bo the body's hurting a lot more recovering from these matches, but uh, I still enjoy playing when I'm, when I'm fit and I'm moving well. Uh, like, I love the sport, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's a real tough thing to come to terms with, so I'm not quite there yet. I can't really give you a date on that one. A quick return to the court for Thierry Linku, up two games to one. A slower return for Jonathan Power, who had his hip worked on. Well, that's right, Jonathan Power, really a product of his hard match, five-set match with Anthony Rickens yesterday. Really very stiff today. And Carrick. statistically, we're seeing a game turn around. When you look particularly at the errors, as you see Power starting off with four in game one, then five, and then seven. Compared to Linku, who went from five to three and now is playing a, a wonderful game with just two errors. Well, that's right. Normally, stats don't tell the whole story, but in this case, they certainly do. Jonathan Power out of frustration and bad positioning, hitting more errors. Terry Lanku dominating. Really playing great squash now. Well, if Jonathan Power is not moving well, this is exactly what he has to do. Has to take the ball short and tight. Now, if you are Here's a loose Linku, one. can you, in fact, make him work and also try to draw lets? Well, I think that Lanku, is, his tactic is not to draw lets, really. I think he just wants to finish off Jonathan as he actually wants to keep the rally going. Jonathan, on the other hand, is going to help him to have breaks. But oh, the, the, the last place that Terry wants to put Jonathan is in that front backhand corner. He's so lethal in there. And again, he puts him yep. in. Drops it. Pulls it down from the clouds. And oh, wow, what a oh. shot. Oh, what a switch. Across the court. Keeping that ball so low, sliding into the side wall. Oh, this is a, a great comeback from Power. Well, let's remember what many athletes say, Martin, as they get older. They may not physically be as good. They use their head more. Well, Jonathan's always had an old head and young shoulders. He's been playing squash since he's... Basically, since he could walk. He was left in Toronto when his father was in the, in the Navy. Left to go to school by himself, and I think he used most of that time to play squash. <laughs> Oh, that's a searching oh, oh. boss from Thierry. 
Well, it's those kind of shots that really drag your opponent physically into the front of the court. Jonathan Power just not having the physical capability at this time. Two all here in game four. Terry Linku leads two games to one after Power won the first, 11-9. Linku won the second in a tie break, 13-11. And then game three, 11-6. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Well, Terry Lanku actually stopping thinking that uh, he was going to hit his opponent, but that was a tight shot from Power. Lanku lucky to get away with the late there. And again, if you're Power, it's wasted point, wasted energy, something that you can't afford at this stage of the game. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, he pulled it down, and now Power may be down and may be out. We mentioned again he had his hip worked on between games. Injury bug has bitten him several times over the past year. Well, Jonathan, he's, uh, he's not known for his economical movement. He's, he's a great mover. He's got such quick feet. He gets so low on the ball. But really, that kind of movement, it's, it really takes a lot out of you. And uh, when you go on in a tournament, that's exactly what's going to happen. You're going to get injured. And we see, really, his movement is very staccato. But the guy's arguing about something here. Well, he, does, he wants this point. We both saw the ball down. So not very charitable, Terry Linku, despite the fact he's down and out and hurt. I still want my point. <laughs> <laughs> well, they all coming at this time. Man, what are you doing? The marker called the ball down. I saw the ball down at the top, the yellow line at the top of the pitch. Yes. The marker, Mike Riley, the referee, Graham Waters. Play on, please. Okay. Conduct warning. Play on, please. Well, there was he, Terry Lanku, trying to get some kind of sense out of the referee but told to get back on court and receives a conduct warning for his conversation. And this could be a telling factor, actually. It's, it really is a battle of concentration for Terry Lanku. Jonathan Power obviously physically ailing. Terry needs to keep his concentration, needs to keep the ball tight to the wall, away from Jonathan Power's racket. Doesn't want to give him attacking opportunities. So Power leads 3-2 here in game four. Remember what we said to start the program. Oh, great fake again. We're not, you don't see that kind of demonstration from Linku. It's now 4-2. And in fact, does he take himself out of the game by showing that kind of emotion? Oh, Tight. what a flick from John Powell. And it's 5-2. Well, it's something that I've been very pr impressed with both players in this match. They've been standing so far forward in the court. The reactions have been incredible. And not only are they seeing the ball early, but they're actually playing beautiful shots from those situations. But Thierry Lanku laps of concentration, puts the ball in the tin, gives power a 6-2 advantage. Well, as Jonathan, Jonathan Power puts the ball in the tin, we, we see there Sira, his wife, watching, looking slightly worried, Vic. It's now 3-6. Linku serving here in game four. Linku leading two games to one. Little drop, a little drop. Who's coming out? One more. Oh, what a great oh, drop shot exchange. And again. This time. Oh, what oh, a great boy. rally. Well, really, you know, it's tough for Power, isn't it? I mean, he's played that shot out. He really has nowhere to go because he's played it right to the forehand of Lincoln. <laughs> well, well, the answer to that is that don't play it there. Put the ball high. Oh, well, now we see Jonathan Power five, squandering six. his 6 2 lead. Kid Lanku back to 5 6. Well, this really is point for point now. Neither of these guys taking control. Oh, jeez. Oh. <laughs> Here, take that. I'll get my point back. Well, that's known as a trickle boast. Jonathan Power sending it around the angles so quickly. 
7-5. Game four of this final, the Face Canadian Squash Classic. With Terry Linku of France leading two games to one. Power won the opener 11-9. Then it was a tie break win for Linku. 13-11, then 11-6. Well, both these guys reaching across the court so well, taking the ball so early. Oh. Seven five, power leading. Oh, oh goodness! Well, Jonathan, talk about fooling him. Well, Jonathan was controlling the rally up until that loose boast, given Terry Lanku the chance to out Jonathan, Jonathan Power. With that beautiful flick. And now let's have a look through the front wall and we'll just see where they're playing and if in fact they're moving up in front of the tee. Well, this is a great angle to watch shots like that. And there was a good indication. There was Linku. He was a good couple of steps in front of the tee. Yeah, he's taking the ball so early. He's stepping up. But it's got to be said in this game, he really hasn't taken the legs from Jonathan. He hasn't got his length in at the back of the court. Well, he did there. He really has to be patient here. But that ball from Jonathan Powell from the back of the court chops it into the front neck. Great shot. 8-7. Jonathan Power leading 8-7 here in game four. Trying to even it at four games apiece. Trying to win a fourth Canadian Squash Classic in the last five years. Now up by 2-9-7. Well, is it possible that we see Terry Lanku getting a bit tired here? It's not something that I considered in this match, but certainly he's looking a bit ragged now Lenku went four games in his semi-final win over Toronto's Graham Riding first time ever that two Canadians let's oh. call Lenku was looking for a stroke first time ever that two Canadians made the final four well, let's, what do you think here let's Should've see that stroke? again Jonathan Power taking the ball off the wall yes, putting it into the seven. middle of the court <laughs> past his left ear Jada Lenku shaped up to them for the volley and you might wonder, maybe he should have played that and no. got the point. And a finger wag from Linku at the, the referee. 9-7, power leading. He's already, Linku, been warned once. Conduct. Well, any more than it's, an, it's a point. Really doesn't want to give away a point at this oh. time. Well, that's tight to the wall. Oh, he took it off his ear. Well, Power managing to stay Tight. in this game. Drops it and gets it. Gets it. Power will serve for a win here to even it at two. Well, he's controlling the game now. He's controlling the rallies. And he looks as though, even though he was getting some treatment in the last break of the last game, he's looking as though he's moving as well as he ever has. But this is the Jonathan Power we all know. Such a shrewd competitor. And Terry Lanku, a few loose shots. Oh, good to the back. Cork, oh, they'll have the it. winner. Jonathan Power brings them to their feet. Here at BCE Place, he wins 11-7. We'll go to a fifth and deciding game. Play Better Squash. Brought to you by Primus with former world junior champion James Wilstrom. Now let's go over the game from an execution standpoint. Hitting the ball straight or cross-court deep always keeps the opponent on the defensive. The drop played into the front two corners of the court is a great way to put pressure on your opponent, especially when he's behind you. Attack and defense. You can play hard and fast to put pressure on the opponent when you're in a good position with regards to the ball. But if not, if you're on the receiving end of an attacking sequence from your opponent, then you can lob it above his head to reach the back corners to give you time to recover. 
That's it for today. Join me next time. I'm James Wilstrop, and the ball is in your court. So squash it. Play Better Squash, brought to you by Primus. The final of the Pace Canadian Squash Classic will go to a fifth and deciding game as Jonathan Power comes back to win game four, 11 7. And statistically, how he turned his game around, Martin, in terms of errors, he went from seven errors in game three down to three and backed it up with eight winners. Well, Jonathan Power turning that fourth game around, he really looked in trouble and uh, he came out and he, he didn't just go for winners, he was very patient, he waited for his opportunities and when he got them, he took them. Fantastic play. As the crowd settles, and Power to serve. Well, this really is anyone's game now. Jonathan Power looked to be physically ailing in the first couple of games. But now, looks to be moving a lot better. And he, you've got to remember, he's got that 500-strong <laughs> crowd behind him as well. He does that. Ooh. The ball right. And in a game where so much of it is mental, drop shot. No let. No let. Ooh. My goodness. And out. Well, it seems as though this is the stance the referee is taking. If you hit a loose shot into the front of the court, your, your opponent gets onto it, counter drops. It's up to you. You've got to go and get it. That's a no let. With a one love lead. But I was going to ask you if, in fact, you thought maybe power had gotten into the head of Lenko, just the way he's come back. Absolutely. You take a look at his Oof. body language now. It seems Loose again. Certainly seems to be more positive than in the second and third games. Wow. Well, and a fish shake as well. Wow. How it just died in the back backcourt to tie it 1 1. Well, if Powers to, was to win this, it would have been an absolutely phenomenal effort. But this really is his, his favorite tournament. He's won it three times before. Three out of four years. The only year he hasn't won it was 2001, and that was Peter Nickel. As Power lost in the semifinal, Power is down. Get a towel, please. And slipping, probably on some sweat. We've seen that a couple of times in the semifinals as well. Oh, very sportsmanlike. These guys obviously could get great respect for each other, as well as being great rivals. Terry Linku with a 3-1 lead here in the fifth and deciding game of this Canadian Squash Classic from the gallery at BCE Place. Oh, how did he get there? Oh, and how did and he get again. there again? <laughs> well, Lanky having a stretch all over oh. the court. Finally. My goodness, you make all those returns, wonderful returns, and there you put it into the top of the tin. Well, let's take a look at that. Teddy Lanku, such great retrieving in that rally, just didn't quite get low enough in that ball, pushed into the top of the tin. Gets power back to 2 3. Oh, you're not going to get there, he does. Oh! No! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Don't 
Well, Jonathan Power showing his frustration. It was a loose shot. But Thierry Lanku holding Power into the ball, getting the stroke. That was a very professional stroke, that one. Four two, Linku leading. Well, he's got that crucial two point cushion. He wants to carry this into the latter part of the game. Three four. Jonathan Power serving here in game five, joined by Jonathan's coach, Mike Way. Let's talk a little bit about how he's feeling physically. We thought that he would, in fact, be feeling the effects of a 91-minute semifinal. Do you think he is? Uh, yeah, for sure he is. Um, and uh, uh, he's, he's feeling it very tight in the legs on his uh, right quad. Um, and, you know, for, he's, he's not thinking about it, but we're definitely thinking about the fact that he was too love and... Uh, 8-3 up yesterday is making a big difference right now, but take nothing away from Thierry. No, Lanku. absolutely not. But brilliant. I mean, and I and I said it to Martin earlier. Sly like a fox. Is that the way he has to play the game now? Does he play it more with his head than he does physically? He's not going to overpower anybody anymore, is he? Or is uh, no, he's not. And he's. But you know, the, the trouble is here though. You've got such a great athlete in Thierry. He's he's got to try and control that midcourt and take him out of the volley. But Thierry gets in the front. He's hurting him. Uh, with his counter drops and with ev everything, there's, there's, he's, he's throwing everything at him, and the, the guy's just on to everything. So he needs to hold the shot a bit longer. And look but at how Lenku is taking everything early. Yeah. And there, realizing where Jonathan was, yeah. he drops shots and now has the lead, looking cool. to win it. Thank you very much yeah. for dropping by. Okay, Pleasure. Thank Thanks you very much. much. Power gets a point back. 5-6 five, six. Five, six. Power serving here in the fifth and deciding game. And unforced well, as he was, gives it right back. That was a huge mistake from Power. Seven, well, at this stage of the game and the fifth game, all tactics are out the window. This is just a point-for-point point struggle now. But Lanku has got a two-point cushion. A shot from power sliding it across the court low to low for Terry Lanku. It's the fifth and deciding game of this final. The Pace Canadian Squash Classic tied at two games apiece. Jonathan Power won the opener. Then Linku, Terry Linku of France, came back to win two and three and power 11 7 and four. And that's how we sit now 7 6 Linku leading here in this fifth game. Well, I love what's happening here. The pace has increased. These guys are working on adrenaline now. They're moving as well as we were in the first game. Well, that's tight from power. Oh, and he whoa, gets it, he got snaps it. it across the court. Absolutely held it to the last moment. We're at tied at seven here in this final. Well, how can you choose a winner between these guys? And once again, we'll look at, they're going to play right at you now, tied at seven. Well, this is it. The winner's going to be decided over the next two or three points. If someone can just squeeze it out. Oh. oh! Wow. Driven to the back by power. And look where... Lenku is. He took it early. That's what you said was a keep. Oh, but he played it right back to the backhand well, instead of going down the forehand wall. Well, Power's retrieving his back to where it was earlier on in this event. Oh, a little drop. Lenku gets there. Oh, this is amazing stuff here. Yes, ah, and they'll do it again. He's clear by the time the ball's there. Seven off from the left. <laughs> 
Well, that was a fantastic rally. Power can really sense his window of opportunity here. He's moving so well. The shot selection, fantastic. Thank you to the uh, ball boys and the ball girls for being so good in this final and trying to keep things as dry as possible. We're tied 7-7. It is game five to decide the winner of the Pace Canadian Squash Classic here at BCE Place. Well, both players having a little smile. It's got to be said, though, Jonathan Power. His body language is looking very positive here. Well, good work in at the back of the court from both guys. Both of them moving so well still. Oh! <laughs> well, that's what Terry Lankin did to Power just a few points before. He pushed him into the shot. <laughs> he gets his stroke. Yep, so Power. Jonathan Power with an 8-7 lead in this final. Fifth in deciding game, trying to win a fourth Canadian squash classic in the last five years and interesting view you can see of course the game from four sides here this glass court and that's one of the wonderful things about the game Martin is the game they take the game to the crowd now to the fan and think of where they've been able to set this court up around the world yeah it really is phenomenal yeah. we've put the courts up and by the pyramids in Giza and Egypt and Grand Central Terminal in New York and Bombay Cricket Club. It's, I mean, it really is a phenomenal achievement. And, and here at the Galleria at BC Place in Toronto, tied at eight all. Well, wow, that's a oh. great shot from Thierry. Power shows his frustration, but Power was caught off, off balance there. Didn't quite get his footwork. But these are crucial points. It's, I've got to say that Jonathan Power's end game has got to be better than Terry Lankis. He's the consummate shot maker. And he's going to need some big shots now. He's down by one. Well, this is crucial. Here's a loose one. Switches it cross court quick. It's tough to watch it from the side glass. Back and forth, back and forth. The heads go here in this fifth and deciding game. But you can see it from all angles. And they'll do it again. It is 9-8. The Frenchman, number two in the world, Thierry Lincou, who has won nine titles in his 10-year pro career, looking to win a tenth here at the Pace Canadian Squash Classic. Well, Terry Lanku got to the number one ranking by being the most consistent player. Actually didn't win a tournament in the whole year, reaching that number one ranking. Showing his consistency. Oh, he took it quickly. <laughs> oh, what a shot by Terry, Terry Lanku. Great reactions. The ball came into his body, changed direction, slid it into the front net. But look where he was, how much in front of the tee he was. And now the crowd responds. Hoping to get power back into it as Thierry Linku will serve for the match and the championship here at BCE Place. Well, it's not often you have match point against Jonathan Power in Toronto. That's tight. And he's, oh, and he's into, into the tin. And Thierry Linku of Paris will win it 11 8 in a five set marathon. Terry Linku wins it. 9-11, 13-11, 11-6, 7-11, 8 Terry Linku of Paris is the champion of the Pace Canadian Squash Classic.
I don't know if you can take any satisfaction in a loss, but uh, the fact that you never gave up in that game has to mean something. Yeah, well, I certainly just wanted to give it all I had for, for everybody who came out to watch the final. I didn't have uh, my 100% today, but that's uh, the nature of the sport when you get this far in the tournament. I think both players are feeling it, and uh, yeah, it was, I just wanted to try to hang in there as best I could. Semifinal had its effect? Yeah, yeah, the semifinal was really tough on me, and uh, I just didn't have the spring in my legs. I couldn't go to the ball beyond it early like I, I normally, like I was all week. So that was disappointing, but uh, still could have gone my way a few points here and there. Absolutely, and we thank you for that. Well, it was obviously uh, about uh, fitness, but uh, it was so mental, you know. Uh, against Jonathan, it's always a, a tough battle. I mean, uh, physically, it's really demanding, really hard. You know, you have to push in every race, but. Uh, Mentally as well, uh, I mean, to, to stay, you stay in the game, you know, and uh, Jonathan is, uh, plays so many good shots, you know. He was getting tired at the end, but he, he had still, you know, this ability to, to play some nicks, so I had to stay very, uh, very careful and uh, very focused on the game, and, uh, well, I guess it worked. Absolutely. Yeah. Did. A third name now goes on the championship trophy. Jonathan Powers was there, of course, three times, Peter Nickel once, and now Thierry Linku as champion of this year's event. And it's obvious that the uh, semifinal, 91 minutes, had its effect on Jonathan Powers. Absolutely. He looked pretty ragged his movement the first couple of games, but in that fifth game, he seemed to be moving well. He had chances, and yeah. I think even though he was, the, he was up against it today, he'll be kicking himself at losing that. And there's nothing to t it's taking nothing away from Thierry Linku, who really had to battle some mental demons, it seemed. Well, for him, it was all about patience and concentration. He's a phenomenal athlete, and he really had to keep the game tight, very tight to the wall, not give Jonathan Power the opportunity to use his attack in game. And uh, he did that through most of the game, and he's, uh, it's a phenomenal victory for him. Martin, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. Let's uh, do it again, I hope, down Thank the you. road somewhere. I hope so. Congratulations to Thierry Linku. He is the champion of the Pace Canadian Squash Classic. And now on behalf of... Martin and our entire crew, thanks for joining us from BCE Place here in Toronto on Canada's sports leader, TSN. Live.com can also be reached through tsn.ca/shows.